Welcome to Diabetic Retinopathy, Preserving Your Eyesight at Diabetes Eye Health. My name is Dr. Richard Beezer, and I'm a senior physician and chair of the Continuing Medical Education Committee at Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston. I'm pleased to serve as moderator for this program. Joining me are Peg Abernathy and Evelyn Smith DeMille, our patient presenters, as well as Dr. Deborah Schlossman, an ophthalmologist at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center. Peg, perhaps you can start us off by describing your diabetes and the diagnosis of your diabetic retinopathy. Well, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes about 27 years ago. The doctor called and said, Peg, your blood sugar is 758. And I said, is that good? And <laughs> he said, no, that's no. not good. And so anyway, the biggest fear that I always had with diabetes and my diagnosis is going blind or losing my vision. So from a very early onset, I decided to get out and be proactive, get out in front of my own eye health and have regular eye exams. Um, and everything was fine for about 20 years. And I know we're going to discuss this uh, in a you know, little bit further. But um, after about 20, 21 years, the doctor looked in my eyes and he said, I see something and I need to refer you out. So yeah. that's when it happens. And that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Deb, perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about that connection between diabetes and, and retinopathy. Sure. So I'm just going to go over a little bit about what diabetic retinopathy is, what it looks like, and why it's important. The retina is the whole inside lining of the eye, and it's lined with tiny blood vessels. And just as diabetes can damage the small blood vessels in other parts of the body, such as the nerves and the kidneys, it can also damage the blood vessels in the retina. And because the structures of the eye are clear, it's very easy through a dilated pupil to examine the retina using special lenses and lights. And in the bottom diagram, you can see the view that the ophthalmologist sees through a dilated pupil. How does diabetic retinopathy develop, Deb? Well, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. But uh, diabetes, high blood sugars, especially if there's also high blood pressure over time, damages these small blood vessels. And the longer you have diabetes, the greater the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy. But you can have retinopathy even if you've only had diabetes for a short period of time. In fact, 90% of people with, diabetes, with type 1 diabetes show some signs of retinopathy after 10 to 15 years. Although some of this may be mild retinopathy and not need treatment, um, there, I there usually are some signs of retinopathy. And in type 2 diabetes, up to 35 uh, per to 40% of patients have some retinopathy at the time they're diagnosed. At the time of diagnosis. That's interesting, particularly since with type 2 diabetes, you're not really sure when the high sugars started. That exactly. may have been a number of years earlier. Exactly. So that's why it's important, especially with type 2 diabetes, to have your eyes checked very uh, soon, as soon as you find out you have diabetes. So there are two main problems that can develop that can affect the retina because of this damage to the blood vessels. The first is that fragile new blood vessels can grow on the surface of the retina because of damage to the normal blood vessels. The normal vessels are deep within the retina, and these abnormal blood vessels grow on the surface of the retina, and they're very fragile and can bleed into the cavity of the eye. So this is called neovascularization, which is new blood vessel growth, and it's also called proliferative retinopathy. These are just terms that you might see because it's the proliferation or growth of new blood vessels. The other problem, which is separate, is that uh, blood vessels can leak fluid into the macula, which you can see in this diagram. It's the central part of the retina responsible for very detailed vision. So you can develop little pockets of fluid in the macula. So you can have each of these problems separately, or you can have both of them at the same time. So in the diagram on the bottom left, you can see a normal, healthy retina. You can see the optic nerve, the macula, and the vessels. And in the bottom right, you can see a, a retina with advanced retinopathy. You can see all these fragile blood vessels on the surface of the optic nerve, and hard exudate or yellow deposits in the macula suggestive of fluid. And it's very important to keep in mind that this patient may have absolutely no symptoms because symptoms don't really develop unless there's fluid right in the central part of the macula or bleeding right into the central cavity of the eye. So even with this advanced stage of retinopathy, there may be no symptoms at all. And uh, just briefly, this is an example again of a normal healthy retina. And this is a retina with earlier retinopathy. You can see just some blood hemorrhages within the retina, some early signs that the retina is not getting enough oxygen. And this is neovascularization again. You can see these, this patch of new blood vessels with some darker red areas on the bottom suggesting that bleeding has started. 
So when symptoms do develop in the more advanced stages, they can in involve a distorted central vision, usually from fluid in the macula, dark or floating spots from bleeding into the cavity of the eye from neovascularization, flashes, blurry vision, and areas that are blacked out. So this is just summarizing the types of uh, visual loss from diabetes. There's the bleeding from neovascularization, macular edema, and then sometimes retinal detachment if scar tissue develops. So uh, Peg, we've, we've talked a little bit about what the diabetic retinopathy can be, and, and clearly metabolic control is important. And I know that's been a hallmark of your approach to your self-care. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, actually, I utilize all the latest technology that I can to help myself manage my diabetes. I'm on an insulin pump. I use CGM. I do multiple. CGM is continuous glucose yes, monitor. Yes, it is. And it checks my blood sugar every five minutes and gives me a reading. So I utilize that as well. I recognize that not a lot of folks use the, all these tools, but I do. I choose to do that. But um, I use all of those things. But the other thing that I do is I also understand my diabetes and I understand my, the different complications and I really try to stay out in front of it. And the thing that I was the most surprised at is uh, that blood pressure played such a role in diabetic retinopathy. I'd never really heard that as much as you hear, you know, watch your blood sugars, watch your blood sugars. So that was a surprise to me. So what I also do, uh, working with my doctor, is we've upped my, uh, blood pressure medicine a little bit more so that we can get that down even further. And so to me, that's I'm doing everything I possibly can every single day to stay in tight control and stay healthy. And I think that's, that's very important. Evelyn, let's turn to you a little bit. Uh, tell us about your diagnosis of diabetes a uh, number of years ago. I was diagnosed when I was a senior in college, just leaving the university. It was on April 29th, 1969, and I was 22 years old. So again, I developed type 1 diabetes a little bit later than is normal. And your doctor gave you some portention for the future. He did. I asked him how long I could expect to live, and he said about 25 years. Well, 25 years later, I was actually working at the Joslin Clinic. A young woman came into the clinic. She had just been told by the same physician at the same university health services that she had type 1 diabetes. And he told her again that she could expect to live 25 years. I had just received my 25-year medal, and I said to her, honey, he doesn't really know what he's talking about. I have had it for 25 years, and I'm not checking out anytime soon. We need to reach out to him for some education, I would say. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you've done for your eyes and, and what your eye exams are like. Well, the first time I was seen in the Beetham Eye Clinic at Joslin, I was pregnant. And since that time, I have been going regularly as my doctor prescribes for my first yearly eye exams, and then over the last several years for six-month eye exams. I actually do not have diabetic retinopathy that has been treated, but I do have cataracts, which again is another complication. And the frequency that they advise is really important. Yes, it is. Tell us about the actual examinations. Uh, what do you go through? Well, the first person I see when I go for an eye exam is my optometrist. And he does a regular eye refraction to make sure my vision hasn't changed. Then the next part of his exam is to administer eye drops to dilate my eyes, to basically spread open the pupils so that the ophthalmologist can look, get a clear vision of the retina at the back of my eye. And that can take a f little while, about 20 minutes, to have your eyes completely dilated. And while that happens, your eyesight gets blurrier and blurrier. It's not a very comfortable thing, but it's something that allows the eye care specialist to get a very good look at your retina and determine whether there are any changes from the last exam. And in reality, anyone who has diabetes is potentially at risk. What advice would you give people? I have very simple advice, and that is 
basically the old public health adage, an ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. Because we can't see our own retinas, it's important to have some eye care specialist who, who is an expert in retina health do the eye exams for you. And also from your perspective, like, like PEG, focusing on the, the metabolic control. Absolutely. Again, the whole idea of keeping blood sugar in as good a control as you can have and blood pressure is, that's just logical to me. Well, we have a, a couple of seconds for some questions uh, now and, and I think emphasizing those points, um, perhaps Deb, a, 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 a questioner wanted to know where they can find uh, specialists in eye care in their area uh, for specific treatments uh, that we're talking about? Well, if there's no major eye hospital in your area, I would probably check with your endocrinologist. I mean, I w most endocrinologists have a good working relationship with retina and diabetes specialists. So that's probably the best place to start. And um, th the other question uh, that comes up here for the eye exam, uh, when after your eye exam would you be able to drive? Can you drive home? Um, not, not <laughs> very safely. It usually takes a couple of hours, an hour and a half, 90 minutes to two full hours for your eyesight to return to normal and to be comfortable driving again. Okay, and, and one final question. Does the use of insulin have any adverse effects on your eyes, uh, Deb? No, the better the sugar, the better, the lower the risk of developing retinopathy. So I, it's really however you have to control your blood sugar and just Good. have a close relationship with your diabetologist. Thank you to Judentech for their support of this educational program. I would like to remind you that additional videos are available at diabeteseyehealth.com. Thank you for joining us.